I want to cover some of this because there's two arguments here, and we'll go to this one first. Um, <coughs> this is a recurring theme, and I think I, as a long-haired American, currently, I've been known to move my look around, but right now I'm 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 enjoying this right now. I'm going, I'm straight up. Uh, we're going like elf, elven, Qui Gon Jin. You know, uh, elf mullet, whatever today. But um, one of the stories that you keep hearing from the right is that, and you've heard this from, of all people, ironically, Tucker Carlson, and Ben Shapiro, and fucking this dude is that American men are just too weak. There's a crisis of masculinity in America. Men aren't masculine enough. And, whoops. And um, we're just not. You know what I mean? We're all, we're all big girly men. It's just the type of things that we do all just girly men, you know. And um, th this, I mean, they've been talking about this shit for years. The feminization of America, blah, blah, blah. And there's two of these fucking videos up. This dude, Ken Blackwell, uh, China wants to feminize the culture of America for control. Um, do they? How are they managing to do that? Is it is this a tofu thing? Is this a soy? Soy is the uh, anti-masculine uh, phytochemical, and therefore, yes. Not only did Ben Shapiro admit he can't satisfy, satisfy his wife in a tweet, he, he literally had to go to Home Depot to buy one piece of wood. I like wood. So um, it's hard to decide which one of these to do, but this one's, uh, who's this asshole? I forget his name. It just says crisis of masculinity in America. Okay, whatever. That, um, this is, by the way, this is Real America's Voice. If you'll recall earlier, um, uh, Mike Lindell called them Real America News because who gives a fuck? They're not his organization, right? All he does is buy ads and keep them afloat. Right. So here you go. This is, remember, Mar America has a crisis of masculinity. Thank God that these dudes, these examples of masculinity, the, you know, will, will somehow be our guiding light of, of beefy, strong masculinity. If, uh, if only I, you know, if only I had a third of the musculature and V-taper that these guys have. Mm-hmm. So here we go. Let's see. <coughs> oh, this is an ad, too. Uh, yes, I do, but I'm not going to click on your stupid fake poll. <laughs> I want to bring in Steve Cortez. Cortez, is Ken Blackwell uh, and Rainer Jackson right? Is this an attack, a full-on attack? Oh, okay. So this is... Ken Blackwell, this is after he said that China is attacking us and trying to turn our our men into ladyboys, apparently. On uh, on American manhood and masculinity. Is this one of the reasons you're seeing underneath the Gallup poll, you're seeing this massive 14-point shift, ladies and gentlemen, for people who identify as Republican. 14-point shift in one year when they've been in control. Talk about a no vote. The one year they've been in yeah, that's because there's a bunch of independents that wouldn't identify as Republicans when Trump was in office because it was gross and fucking embarrassing, and now they're moving back. The same thing happened after Bush, after the second uh, Bush administration, when he first got reelected a second time, Republican uh, um, people calling themselves Republicans dropped off, and more independents who voted Republican every fucking time anyways, it didn't really matter, um, took their party affiliation down. And then percentage-wise, it went way up. Well, percentage-wise, they're already behind the eight ball as far as uh, the number of people in their party. So give me the hard number. Remember, again, anybody who tells you just the percentage number without giving you the baseline number, the actual nu numeric value, is selling you something. Full control of everything. The American people s spoke. Steve Cortez, what do you think? Steve, I think you're exactly correct. There's a crisis of masculinity in America. Is there? How could there be, Steve, with guys like you running around, being all butch and stuff? 
look, I'm one of these folks that believes that males and females are uh, within the the scope of their their material sex have a lot of room to move in their expression. So I'm not trying to corral anybody into traditional views of manhood and masculinity and say that that's the be-all, end-all peg point on all these things. I know what I value. Um, you know, my mine goes somewhere between, you know, Conan and Bruce Lee uh, with Kiss and Steve Martin thrown in in the middle. You know, that's, that's where my needle moves. Um, but I'm... Are we really going to get lectured on the lack of masculinity in men? And, and when they talk about this, they mean traditional masculinity. These, these guys mean SEAL Team 6, you know, like chest cleavage, um, uh, fucking barbed wire tattoos, uh, you know, with the, with the rutting power of a rhino. And the uh, the sex appeal of Negan on a bender, right? That I, I'm, we're not talking about what you and I might find is okay when, in the spectrum of what people can be. These guys have a very distinct idea what that is, and I'm just saying neither one of them are anywhere near it. Not even trying. This fucking dude is gonna tell me. That men in the country aren't masculine enough. I, 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 I maybe maybe I'm wrong. Maybe maybe the 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 masculinity needle pegs at assistant principal for him. Right. Our society and our politics right now, and men are thankfully finally reacting and revolting against it. I think it's one of the reasons, by the way. Well, that is one that is one of the areas where you guys uh, are true because both of these men are revolting. I know it was easy, but come on. That yes. Donald Trump did so. Oh, that, it, let's uh, yeah, CSL. Good point. Eighties action movies. That's that's their that's their idea of masculinity. Now, honest to God, in many ways, mine too. Like if I'm shooting for being my most masculine self, I'm going Rocky Four Cobra zone of things as far as. What my, you know, physique would, you know, like my dream, the dream physique, I'm going on. All right. Like, that's what I would go for. And in theory, that's what this fucker thinks, too. We, he supposedly, yeah, Rambo 3, man. Holy shit. The, the, the fucking sinew that, that he had. Yeah, Roadhouse. There you go. Right? All those things. Apparently... And this is all right. So this is this is my current. I'm I'm the same age as him. This is my current physique, with uh, mild improvements lately. I feel like I'm doing all right. I um, I'm wearing black jeans and a green T-shirt, and this and I have a NASA wristband, and my hair is back in a half ponytail. This is how I'm existing. This is really me. Oh yeah, these uh, these do have that Chuck Norris stretch uh, diamond uh, in the in the leg, so you can kick high. This is a bit, you know, the whole like, like it's fun. They're good. They're good that way. Anyways, never mind. I want to kick my lamp off the table. Um, um, yeah, Daryl's another one. Whatever you know, what I'm talking about. All right, so th this guy thinks that I, I myself. I'm a soy boy lefty who is weak and wants everybody to be weak and blah, blah, blah. All right. That's it. And I, I'm, I, how old, do we know how old Steve Cortez is? How old is Steve Cortez? Just to, as a compare, just so I know what, um, uh, Yeah, uh, let's see. Bio. Uh, nah, nah. That doesn't say. All right, where is it? Uh, age. Let's just do this. 
age. He's, uh, yeah, he and I are the exact same age. I am the same age as this dude. So he and I grew up with the same fucking, uh, yeah, he's 52. He and I are the same age. We have the same cultural references, largely. <laughs> and so I, I know exactly what movies he was watching when he was a teenager, just like I was, forming some idea of what it means to be, you know, a, a man or have some level of masculinity in your life, which I, I believe in tonic masculinity. I'm a big fan of it. I, you know, I think... Um, I, I believe in the value of masculinity in the same way I believe in the value of femininity. I just happen to be male and therefore, um, I dovetail the best parts of my expression through that. That's my way of living. Allegedly, that's his too. Because like I said, he and I are the same age with Hispanics overall, but particularly with Hispanic men, because I believe culturally, uh, many Hispanic men were very much drawn to this authentically masculine and unapologetically masculine figure, this kind of leader who was unafraid to display some... Wait, wait. D Donald Trump? You're kidding, right? Un unapologetically masculine. This is what they were drawn to. Squirt, 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 squirt. That's that's what they were drawn to. Were they? With the with the with the weird jogging legs thing. Yeah, is that what they were drawn to? One, two, three, four, five. You, hey, how you doing? Uh, all that, all those people. Nice. Squirt, 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 squirt. Milk that cow. Milk that cow. Milk. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever that herky jerky bullshit was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They were attracted to the, you know, just the. The non-stop masculine oomph of the guy. Yeah, totally. What? <laughs> That's what did it. Machismo, uh, which is a term that is used in Spanish. And to connect this to economics, Steve, regarding is what's it, happening... To is it... Machismo is used in Spanish? That's interesting. Is it used anywhere else? If only they used it in America. Um, gosh... Uh, amongst English speakers, perhaps it would catch on. Men in America, workers in America, whether they're men or women, workers have been losing, losing ground in terms of real wages for decades in America. But uh, not so fast, asshole. The 1970s. But the losses are more pronounced for men than they are for women. So literally <laughs> for more than a generation. Because of automation. Hey, you know how many guys it used to take to carry a pallet before the invention of the forklift? Please continue. And have seen their real wages decline with a very important res respite when they did very well under President Trump. But the trend since the 1970s has been for men to earn dramatically less in real terms. When I was... In, in real terms, uh, no, it hasn't. It fucking simply has not. The transfer has been in how people spend their money and what they are, what things are available to them at a new price point. The value of the dollar has gone up in what it materially brings you, even if its international buying power is somehow lower. It's just, this is fucking stupid. But all of a sudden, yeah, but Trump fixed it. I mean, not, not in any sustainable or legitimate way or actually. Wages didn't rise when he was... They are rising now. 
Steve, when I grew up on the south side of Chicago in a very working class neighborhood, the norm was for most families to thrive on a single income. Now, most of the time that was a dad working, doesn't have to be, but we took that as a given in American society that a middle class income could comfortably support. For, first of all, fucko, no. He and I are the same age. When we were both coming up, it was way common for to have two working uh, working parents in the household. The fuck are you talking about? We're not talking about the fifties right after the war, you dipshit. It's <laughs> impossible. A family that is no longer the case today. It went away. Oh, it's actually it's actually increasingly the case. That's why there's more jobs available than there are people. Because some of the people who've taken themselves out of the workforce, if you bother to look, are people who are like, yeah, I don't have to work. My partner's making enough. I'm raising the kids or doing a business at home, like an Etsy thing that I've wanted to start. I'm investing in another thing we're going to do. That's increasingly happening. And Steve, we hardly even talk about it going away and what it has meant for our society. That's why I think it's so important for us to grab this as really, to me, the holy grail of, of economic populist nationalism in America is to empower American families, again, to thrive on one income. And Steve, this isn't patriarchy. I'm not saying women can't work, that they can't make their own economic choices. I'm saying, though, let's give families the option. And it may be the man and it may And again, A, what the fuck does this have to do with masculinity? Yeah, CSL. Like, we we're both latchkey kids in the 80s. This is so weak. But the, the idea is that uh, this has happened because men are l less manly. That's the theory. Instead of outsourcing of factory jobs and the automation of those here at home and it requiring less physical labor. No, it's it's because uh, China made us uh, eat, uh, stop eating beef or something while they ate our beef. Well, but let's give them the option of thriving on a single income and a parent at home raising children. It was the norm in this country. Globalization ruined it. It can become the norm again if we're brave enough and bold enough to put these policies forward. What I, I want to take a second because I, I want to make sure. Again, did, what, did you say what policies? Did he say any policies? What is it? An no, no tofu policies? The fuck policies is he talking about? Trump's policies, which didn't result in this? People understand your background. I love having you on because I say you're one of the smartest hedge fund guys that was one of the first Trump supporters from Wall Street. Very start, smart guy about markets, particularly what make markets drive. But about you personally. I'm yeah, he's, he's, so, he's so good at it. He had to leave that lucrative business and become a campaign advisor and then write books and show up on TV rather than actually run one of those things. I don't do enough of this on the show, but, um, you know, because pre President Trump, when you open for President Trump, oftentimes he says you're the waspiest Hispanic he ever met. <laughs> the, the reason I love your Georgetown Grey Lady, but you are, you're a boxer, you're a football player. I mean, you didn't come from privilege. You fought your way up, but you still box. Or are you still, at least, I think your wife put the kibosh on that, at least in the ring, but you still practice. Walk through. Oh my fucking God. What? Okay, first of all, I was it was ridiculous at football and boxer. But secondly, your wife put the kibosh on you boxing and... Again, what what is this lecturing about masculinity shit again? What is happening? How is this even how, how is this not an SNL sketch? Gee, how did you Oh god. Yeah, she wanted to, but I told her fuck up. So that's why I've had my nose broken three times. And you're a guy, you're a guy that's full on high testosterone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just yeah. First of all, uh, Steve, no offense, but he's fucking with you. He doesn't actually think that. Look at him. He's laughing and writing a note. He's co He covers when he's laughing at his own guests and shitting on them. He does it with Mike Lindell all the time. What the fuck are you talking about? F full on. What do you. What?
What is that? Either of these guys disgusting, disgusting, well, disgusting, but discussing full on testosterone? What? How is this? This is fucking ridiculous. Listen, you know, America needs that kind of leadership. We need it at, at the national level, and of course, we need it on the micro level within families. We need men who, again, are unapologetic about being authentically masculine. Yeah, yeah, don't even, like, if you're watch, your wife tells you to stop boxing, just be like, I'm a man. I never ask you to stop being a woman. Never, don't ask me to stop being a man. Right? You did that. Did you, did you quote Rocky? <laughs> Jesus. And that doesn't mean domineering. That means leadership. Uh, it often means being a servant leader. You know this within your family, within your company. Oh my God. This is the most watered down argument. Like, literally, I feel my balls shrinking just listening to this bullshit. <laughs> Um, and within a country. And again, I think we've had a crisis in masculinity in this country to the point where it is largely censored to even acknowledge the fact that there are two sexes, much less the differences and the complementarity uh, between the two sexes. We have no, it isn't. It's that you guys can't do that without denying other people's existence at the same time. You don't believe in the strength of masculinity or femininity. You don't believe in either of them. Because if you did, you could, you could, uh, you could, you could accept them and express them without removing anyone else and their ability or to live their own life. Like, because you're all, anytime you're doing that shit, you're just apologizing for masculinity and femininity in the process. Like, you can't have that because we can't have that. Nobody can have that. It's like, it's just so fucking lame. Also, what, and like servant leadership what the fuck do you think Biden's doing? If he talks loudly and says it's about who counts the votes, then then he's being mad and angry. An angry old man yells at clouds, even though he gives a shit about voting, which you should too, but you don't for some fucking reason. Good Lord. But yeah. Regain sanity. I think we're starting to, by the way, on this score. And again, it's it's, it's, oh yeah, did it have something to do with, like, this artificially bizarre, like, bloviated bullshit version of, uh, faux masculinity being tossed around as some sort of odd example of what it means to be a fucking man? When he's, everything that is the opposite of manhood? So, it's a 15-year-old it's a boy. No offense to 15-year-old boys out there, but I was one, and I know what you're going through. But you don't want to stay that way forever, and you don't want to do it when you have the power of, of an adult male. This motherfucker, this is, this is masculinity, this is maleness. Maybe once he's no longer some sort of, you know, uh, again, a tuning fork for what you think masculinity is, maybe it solves itself. Oh, God. I think candidates who are willing to be brave enough to stand up and say, number one, there are there are two sexes. And for example, we're going to defend girls and women's. Well, there are two sexes. Transgender is a different phrase entirely. It has to do with gender, not physical sex. That's kind of the reason why the word transsexual isn't used very often, because you can't transition between sexes because it's a hormonal thing. That's hence the growth of the language around this. That's, that's why the phrase is transgender now. That's why it's used most frequently. I know some, uh, what most would call transgender people, who prefer transsexual themselves, largely because when they grew up and, and how they perceive themselves and what it means to them, and because they disagree with the sort of the fluidity argument of gender, and they believe they are truly themselves, and therefore, when people go, well, gender's just a construct and it's watery and you can be a little bit of this all the time, they don't feel it, it, they feel it denigrates them as a trans person. So they stay away from that. That's their choice. And I respect them for that choice when they need that choice to be made for them. That said, they, they, they're fine with it being two sexes. They just believe they physically transition between the two. But again, that's why the phrase transgender, like this, again, this is so fucking stupid.
And again, a distinction without a difference as far as these idiots are concerned, because the, the point is they just don't want trans people to feel comfortable. Sports because this lunacy that's going on right now in the country um, is just an absolute insult to women. So that would be a, a, an example of how this matters from a policy perspective. But I think even more broadly to say that, look, for America to thrive again, we need to have strong families in America. We don't have strong families right now. One of the reasons, not the only reason, but a driving reason that we don't have strong families is because a single wage earner can no longer support, comfortably support, a family in this country. Yeah, but why the, wait a minute. Fuck you. First of all, up until the industrial age, everybody fucking worked. The whole family had to farm whatever patch of ground they had or get eggs from the chickens or fight off marauders and, you know, all over the wherever your tribe came from. Everywhere. How in the hell is this indicative of the strength of the family? And, I, I, and again, strong families can't have two workers. Two examples. A woman working in a Man working or two men and two women working aren't, aren't good examples to their children? What the fuck does that mean? Both my parents worked. We had a strong family, though. Hold on. I need to check something else, too. Oh, and we're both from Chicago. He's slightly younger than me. His birthday was just January 1st. Um, let's see. So let's look at... Uh, while we're, you know... We don't want to pick on one Steve. Let's pick, you know, the other. Steve and... There you go. So, um, S Steve Bannon, um, is on his second wife, third wife. Um, he's, uh, well, I mean, I, let's see what we got in terms of what kind of, what kind of strong family <coughs> as Steve had. I'm sure that there's, I mean, lots of, let's see, the wiki, don't care. Uh, let's see, Luis Picard was his ex-wife, is an American political, okay. blah, blah, blah. Uh, political strategy banker, served as White House chief strategist, blah, 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 worked at Goldman Sachs as an investment banker for two years. Huh. Served as executive producer in Hollywood between 91 to 16. It's just shuffling money around. Um, who is Steve? I guess, is, married on, uh, is married on three different occasions and been involved in three divorces. Mary Louise Picard was the second wife of former uh, Doland <laughs> Trump advisor. All right. Steve and Mary let's go, walked down the aisle April 95. Divorce three years is that first marriage. She's an investment banker there. Okay. So, yeah, that's her. That's his first wife or second wife. I don't know. Anyways, three wives. So he's had three strong houses. Steve Cortez only had one strong house. Way to go. Country. That changed because of policy, Steve. It changed because of globalization and offshoring primarily. There are other factors, but those are the main ones. It was starting to reverse itself for the first three years of the Trump administration. Um, um, no, it was not. It has been starting to re reverse itself since the mid 2000s and it's accelerating now. But, you know, COVID took something that was going to take 10 years and squoze it down to three. America first economic nationalism was working and it was working uh, on steroids. The CCP virus that unfortunately. Um, excuse me, real men don't take steroids. If you're, you know, I don't recommend it. They make your balls smaller. Oh, Steve, I see. Sometimes you have blowback and they give you a uh, gynomasty or whatever it's called where you get man boobs and all. Oh. Hmm. 
a, a halt, a temporary halt to that process. And now what Joe Biden is doing, which I know we're going to talk about, what he's doing to the economy is making things worse by magnitudes. But the point is, we know what... But, wait, sorry. Wor worse by magnitudes. Worse. Um, we'll end on this because I, I like... Um, <clears throat> This is from a, a, a site called Supply Chain Brain. This report says manufacturing is coming back to the U.S., so manufacturers coming back, I guess it depends on who you ask. Strong evidence of a reshoring trend. The relocation of production from China and other parts of East Asia back to the United States can be found in the 2021 annual report of sourcing specialist Thomas. It contradicts the contention of some industry experts that China will remain the dominant source of manufacturing for U.S. importers of consumer goods for the foreseeable future. On this episode, we'll join by Thomas President, Chief Executive Officer Tony Uphoff, who offers numbers showing a dramatic increase in reshoring in the past year. Gee, when did this guy? August 11, 2021. Hmm. And 83% of surveyed companies say they're likely to reshore all or some of their production in the near future. If that happens, Thomas estimates, it could drive some $443 billion in U.S. economic value over the next year. We've already talked about the battery factories for the electric vehicles. We've already talked about the chip factories that are coming uh, back to the United States or starting from scratch here. And let me, let me say something to our, our uh, business friends out there. Thanks to COVID, and this was always going to work out this way uh, in one form or another, but thanks to COVID in particular, drawing it into stark relief, that has zeroed out the economic benefit of offshoring to China. All the money made during the, the growth years from the mid-90s to 2018-19 before they started slowing down and we started, the, the rest of the world got hit. All of that, all those gains, all those financial gains, all those benefits were effectively wiped out in a year. It made it economically a zero-sum game. Hi, buddy. Chip came in because he knew I was supposed to be. Look who came in. Hi. He heard me talking about Hi, buddy. It's a wash. There was no benefit. And the idea is that if you look at the economic future of China, as far as what they're planning, staying there is going to be the same problem. Staying there, is, you know, and, and hoping you'll make that same kind of money is, 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 I mean, nobody buys that. Nobody believes that. And so all that, all that like, hey, look how much money we'll make if we build this cheaper over here. It cost you in the back end in COVID. It almost wrecked your company. And the and the U.S. government is not going to be there to pick up the pieces on that kind of supply chain stuff in the future, especially with the moves that, that we're making towards, you know, reshoring or onshoring, you know, important parts of the supply chain, namely pharmaceuticals, electronics, chips, um, that kind of stuff. There might be some reasons to assemble it in Mexico or in Canada, for example, or in South America someplace, because it's trucks and boats can bring stuff over here and we have a better relationship with those countries. But there is no there there in a future of Chinese manufacturing for many, many companies. And not just because of this stuff, but because of the way the Chinese government looks like it's going over, you know, over the next couple of years, over the next decade. So there there if you look at it financially from a you know from the bottom line of these big companies that have been around for a long time and intend on being around for even more, the money it cost them and how much it wrecked their position because of COVID and, and the idea that there won't be another one out of China because they're not changing what they're doing, much to the chagrin of the Chinese people, this, the, the, there, there's no reason to reinvest. None. I just froze that screen. We'll just left it there.
So the idea of like, you know, inflation driving the price of some of these things up, if you, ladies and gentlemen, if you, let's say you take out all the tax dollars that were spent, that could have been spent on other shit, just keeping the economy afloat. If you take out all the tax dollars that were spent making sure that, you know, uh, shipping and all these other things could help you get stuff to you while you were in lockdown, and, and compare and what that's going to cost you in terms of debt and restructuring and all that kind of stuff over the years, it's ultimately going to cost you a lot less to make it here and pay a little more long term. Yeah. Yeah. He's a, we, we're chip manufacturers over here. Hi, Chip. Are you sleepy boy? Are you a sleepy boy? Are you a sleepy boy? I know you are. I'm sure this doesn't help the masculinity argument. <laughs> Dudes with cats, what the hell's going on? Girly man with the cats, you know, gets a giant dog that doesn't even like to be petted, that still has its balls. He's a little boy. He's a good little boy. Chip is sleepy. He want he doesn't understand why I'm not why I'm still in here. Cause I when I run late, he comes in to get me. Yeah. So, yes, real man kiss cats. This is true. So let's finish this ridiculousness out, and uh, and I'll on the morning show over the next week or so. Um, I'll we'll we'll dive more into the Chinese economy stuff that I've been talking about, and you'll get a, a starker look at this. What are you doing? What are you doing, buddy? Hi. He's batting at wires. We have those three years, 2017 through 2019, as data points to point to the success for families uh, of, of the economic nationalist okay. policies of America first, we can get back sure. there. If we get back there, people will lose money, stupid. Yes, real men do wear kilts. I have one myself. All right, I'm going to sign off. Thank you guys so much. I love you. Chip loves you. What are you doing, buddy? What did you want? Did you want to come in here and hang out with me? What's happening? What's happening? Am I, am I supposed to... Am I, Ignoring you? Is that what this is all about? Are you feeling ignored? Yeah, you are. You need more ear scratches? This kid. This kid with the purring and the love. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're hungry, though. I bet that's what it is, too. Oh, that's it. Uh-huh. You want to go upstairs and get a snack? When I've been I've been teaching him to respond to the uh, Brad Pitt um, "Once Upon a Time in Hollywood" noise. Oh, that's exciting! And he's learning it. Do you see that? And I feed him when when I feed him snacks or I set him up in the morning. I make that noise, and I've been doing it for a while, and he's he's totally responding to it. It's super adorable. I'm training a cat, and he sits. He also fetches. He thinks he's a dog. So I'm kind of I'm kind of butch about it. All right, y'all. Anyways, much love to you guys. I'll see you later. Take care of yourself and take care of somebody else. And I will see you. Thank you guys for the super chats. I'm sorry I didn't uh, mention more of those today. They will be in the credits. I appreciate you guys so much. Don't forget to subscribe. Twitch.tv. I didn't reset at all this show. I'll get better. I'll get better at it. You guys can help me. Uh, just remind me to reset when I don't. About every half hour. I think that works. Or at the top of a new clip. We'll figure it out. Anyways, much love. See you guys later. Take care. Bye. Say bye, Chip.